Hello and welcome to Blender 4 Biochemists. So today I'm going to be walking you through how to install and get started with uh, the molecular nodes add-on that I've created. I'm going to be making some more videos later on to how to do specific effects and sort of really get into the nitty-gritty detail, but this is going to be a series of videos and so we're going to start with just the first one which is downloading and installing, downloading a structure and having a play around with some of the styles. So for this you're going to need Blender 3.2 and above and you're going to need to download from my GitHub. So it's github.com radiate Johnston for slash molecular nodes. I'll link this also in the description down below. But you'll need to download um, molecular nodes. And so to do that, go to the releases page. If you need a text version of these installation, you can see down here that there's the uh, documentation on how to install. But if we go to the releases page, we can see that the most recent version is 0 0.8 for Blender 3.2x. So the most recent couple of versions don't work with Blender with earlier versions of Blender. So 0.5 did work with 3.1, but 0.7 and 0.8 don't work with Blender 3.1 and below. In these assets, we can download molecular nodes there by just clicking on it. So it's gonna start downloading for me. And now we can install it inside of Blender and we can get started. To install inside of Blender up here on the left, we can go edit, preferences, and add-ons, we search for molecular nodes, you'll see there's nothing there. And so if we just click install, downloads, molecular nodes, you see that something's appeared. If nothing appeared, then just search for it in this little search bar. And if we click this arrow, we can see that our um, add-on is here. There's a link to documentation. There's also, there's also a link if you need to report a bug. So this is the current bugs that I'm aware of. And then there's also a link if you want to, or a button to remove it or uninstall it. Now it's installed, but we need to enable it. So we can click that to enable and you'll see a few other options pop up. So molecular nodes actually leverages a couple of Python libraries to do what it does. I didn't code all of this myself, certainly not. Um, and the main one that we need to get started with is Atomium. And so if you're on Windows, hopefully you've been launched as um, administrator. And there are some bugs currently on Linux that you can see on the GitHub page about installing, but we should be able to just click this install button, wait a few seconds, maybe about a minute or so. And the bundled version of Python that came with Blender will download and install Atomium. And so you can see it's changed color and that's now installed and ready to go. So if we want to include any molecular dynamics trajectories, we'll need to do more installation, but we'll come back to that in a later video. Well, let's just get started. So if we go down here, we're in a fresh scene and I'm just gonna go over here to this scene properties and we can see here is a tab for molecular nodes. And so if we just get started, I'm gonna put in a PDB ID, click download, wait a few seconds if it's a large structure, maybe wait a minute or two, and you'll see a bunch of atoms have appeared in my scene. Now, you can see they don't have color, they're sort of this weird diamond shape, and if we go up to rendered view, you'll see there's actually nothing there, and that's kind of strange. Now, the reason for that is because initially these are point clouds, so if we go into cycles, they will show up and I'll show you how to make them show up inside of EV but initially they won't show up so I'm going to switch to cycles I'm going to switch to GPU compute just to make sure it all sort of runs smoothly and so there are our atoms so that's very exciting now the advantage of molecular nodes as an add-on is one speeding up the import of atomic data into blender and then more importantly is allowing, is making that uh, information available to geometry nodes inside of Blender. So not only can you download it, but you then have access to that information to do all sorts of procedural am animations. So we can go to our geometry nodes tab, which again, we're gonna see our little point cloud. So I'm just gonna go back to rendered. 
and drag that up. And so this is our node tree that's currently processing the information. And so if we see up here to the right, molecular nodes has created a collection. It's created a collection for this particular protein. It's created a model, which is the protein we're working with. And it's also created this collection, which has properties inside of it. So if I enable that, you'll see that there's these three things here. And you'll also see that there's a bunch of points all over the place. Now, don't worry about these. You won't have to actually interact with them at all. This is how I encode the information in a way that Blender can understand inside of geometry nodes. And they just stay unticked. But importantly, we have our node set up here. So if you haven't used geometry nodes before, then I recommend seeing the DNA video that I made about Blair geometry nodes and making DNA in Blender and also uh, the tutorial from CG Matter, sorry, from CG Figures about uh, intro to geometry nodes. What's going on here is that to begin with, we have our node tree. We have our atoms that get piped in. If I drag this over here, you can see that it's just a bunch of points. And so in our spreadsheet in the top left, we can see there's just 1400 vertices and they just have a position. And so without these nodes, they're just XYZ points in space. After this node, all of their properties are set up and you'll notice that they're now a point cloud. And not only do they have a position, they have a radius, they have a B factor, they have an atom name number, an amino acid name, atomic number, atom index, all these uh, numeric properties and a couple of Boolean properties. So true, false, whether it's a backbone or alpha carbon. Now the information inside of geometry nodes doesn't support text basically at the moment. And so I've had to convert amino acid names to numbers basically into numerical numbers. And that's what it's, this node here is doing. And you can actually turn these on and off. So if you ever want to speed up a node tree, you can turn these properties on and off, but for most things, leaving them all on is fine. Now it hasn't set up any colors. That's because it hasn't gone through this style color node. So I'm just going to drag that in there. And now our colors are set up. Now you'll see there's one other node here that you start with, and that's a random value. And so if I control right click and cut that, you'll see that all of the carbons are gray because they're colored to be gray here. But if I plug this into there, then what it's doing is based on the chain number, it's generating a random vector, which is the same as a random color, and it's coloring the carbons based on it. Now with this model, that's not actually the great example because there's only one chain. So let's go to a slightly more exciting model. 6N2Y, I'll download that, wait a few seconds for it to process, download, and already it's in. And so I'm gonna go tilde, view selected, and we can see our protein up there. Let's just add in a the sun, so I can see what's going on. And so here is our ATP synthase. Now you can see that each chain is getting a different color. And that's because the chain number for the atom is used to generate a random vector, which is then used to color it. If I was to plug this in for each of the elements, then the entire chain would be colored that color. But currently it's just plugged into the carbon. Now, the inside of molecular nodes being installed has added some pre-built nodes that I've gone through and made. Um, that make the whole process a lot easier. And so if we do Shift A, or we do our Add, you'll see all the way down here at the bottom, molecular nodes. And so this is a bunch of pre-built nodes by me that I've made for working with molecular data. And so this is a properties node, this is a color node. So properties, set up atomic properties. That's the same node there. And styling color atoms, that's the same node there. And so let's add a different style. So there's a couple of different styles. I've done ribbons, surface, um, atoms in Eevee and sticks. So if we go ribbon and just drop that on, you'll see it goes through and builds a ribbon diagram, sorry, a, a ribbon mesh 
based on the atoms and it colors it based on the alpha carbon color. So if we were to cut that, it would all be gray, but because the alpha carbons are colored differently, then all of our different chains are different. So we can drag that, change the radius. If we control X to delete that, we can do style surface. So we plot that on and it goes through and generates a surface based on all of the atoms. Now by default, it colors based on the alpha carbons. If we untick color by chain, it will color by the nearest element. So your nitrogens and your oxygens. Now it doesn't look very nice, but we can turn that back on and you can affect the mesh itself. So let's take that up to three to make the radius wider, maybe 0 0.5 to make it sort of blobbier. And we've got a blobbier looking mesh. Now, what you might notice is that your computer slows down with some of these larger computations. If we go to the top right here and turn timings on, we can see how long each node takes to compute. So you can see setting up the properties takes 10 milliseconds. And if we turn off some of those properties, you'll see that it takes less time, but we've lost some of the crucial properties that are required for building this mesh. And the actual surface itself takes around 50 milliseconds. If we bring that down to 0 0.2, now that's up to 360 milliseconds. If we go styling sticks and we plug that in, we'll see that, oh, actually nothing's showing up via the sticks. And that's because there isn't any bond information. And so if you had calculate bonds ticked when you imported the mesh, then this would work. But if you need to calculate bonds, you can go properties, find bonds. And this uses the same uh, bond finding algebra as in PyMol. And we plug our bonds in there and you'll see that it's gone through and calculated all of your bonds. Now you'll see that that's taken 450 milliseconds and then 180 milliseconds. So it's quite computationally expensive to find bonds, but it's done a pretty good job there. And we can change our radius of our sticks if we want, and we can join it up. If we go properties, and we go 0.3. And now we have a ball and stick model generated entirely procedurally. So that's how you get started using molecular nodes. Like I said, I'm going to make a bunch more videos on how to use other parts of the node pack, but I'm going to try and keep them sort of short and sweet and just cover specific areas so I don't uh, ramble for too long. So thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. Um, please do tweet at me with proteins or cool images that you managed to make using molecular nodes and different creations that you come up with. I hope that this can really start to enable a lot of really cool uh, scientific artwork with protein structures. If you would like to support the creation of molecular nodes, there is a link to buy me a coffee. A bunch of people have bought me a few coffees. Some people have even bought me 20 or so coffees which I'm very, very appreciative of. Um, a lot of coffees have gone into making this, and so I hope to make a lot more. And I will leave it there. And again, thank you so much. Please do like and subscribe and all that sort of fun stuff and share it around with other people who might be interested in making cool protein artwork. And I will continue to make this series and continue to improve the development of molecular nodes. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.